Hey guys, I want to welcome you back once again to our Friday Connections. Um, I've got a real motley crew with us today. Uh, <laughs> many of you know these men, some know of them, and others, you don't even know who I am. But uh, for the sake of clarity, I'm Pastor Daryl, and this is our team of elders. We have Elmer Farlow, uh, Tom Stout, and we have Brad Malpass. And you can probably tell by the expressions, this is the last uh, thing they would like to do is to have to be on camera. But uh, we just wanted to take, after we've been together and we've been doing these little videos for about 10 weeks, just wanted to just talk about where we've been. And um, as elders, we typically try to meet every couple of weeks and we've had um, the challenges just like you have the whole social distancing, but needing to have wisdom. So uh, again, y'all see me, you hear from me all the time, but uh, I'm gonna tell you, um, back in the early days of the ministry here, I would have been sunk had it not been elders. Elders are the men set apart by God to give spiritual oversight and wisdom. And I'm thankful we also have a, a large team of deacons that are wonderful men of God, the serving arm of this ministry. So um, hopefully you can meet them soon. But uh, I want to just kind of kick it off and give you guys a chance to tell whoever is listening who you are. But just where have you seen God at work? Um, I'm going to put you on the spot first, Tom. Just the fact that you've not been, you've not had the privilege just to sit and do nothing. But you recently started a new business that you caught yourself in. Um, a storm. So, what's life been like the last several weeks? Oh, like a Myrtle Beach roller coaster, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, you know, when it first happened and the governor did the stay at home order, we were in a very uh, bad situation cash wise. And so, you know, and it was really painful to lay off 38 people at one shot. And, uh, but God was good. It took a couple of weeks. I actually took about four weeks to actually get the PPP money in uh, and then we were able to go back to work in May and so everybody uh, but it was just a challenge all the way around everybody that laid off that got laid off at least in our crew probably 30% of them didn't collect unemployment for four to six weeks because of well no one was prepared for that many people to apply mm -hmm. at one time and it was just it was just a fiasco so it was tough on everybody but uh, we're back at work now we went back to work in early May and it was just an answer to prayer and you know initially it started off where there was a you know a level of fear and then it became a level of faith and then you know god gave my wife karen a word because i'm too hard-headed to listen all the time but it was position yourself and see the salvation of your god mm -hmm. and uh and that's what we did you know wow. and it's been good and that's awesome mm -hmm. we know i know as elders our desire is for our people and we pray for them and, and care for them. And I know that you, just what you've described, seeing that many people laid off, not collecting money, gives a, even a greater awareness of our church. And, you know, so many, we're not sure, we've not heard from those that have, have struggled financially versus those that have continued. But um, I know you've got to, you've had to have seen from a whole other perspective just where our people are at um how about uh elmer did you even know there's been a pandemic the last 10 weeks uh not as much as tom has uh, i work for a uh, custom cabinet shop so being tied to the construction industry we were deemed necessary so we we never closed our doors we locked our doors so nobody come in we spread out and worked and we've worked right on our we've had more business come in since the pandemic started and, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah we didn't have the effect that john had when yeah. tom had but, but you know probably out of us in the room and those that are watching you've got more first-hand experience with crisis and disaster um, you're very involved with a, a big ministry. Tell us a, just a, a little bit about that ministry. 
Uh, my wife and I are involved in the North Carolina Baptist Disaster Relief, so we we get thrown right in the middle of disasters on a regular basis, it seems. Uh, we've seen, seen times when uh, we're not that unfamiliar with going into Walmart and seeing the shelves <laughs> empty. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we were involved in the uh, Katrina uh, hurricane that uh, hit uh, uh, New Orleans and southern Mississippi and all, and, and we were there for two years, and, and uh, you know, we've seen how this kind of people, this kind of situation works on people, and uh, this has been pretty mild compared to a, uh, a big disaster like a hurricane or tornadoes and that kind of thing, but uh, it's, it has its own issues too. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm thankful for the wisdom and the, really the heart. You just got a heart for people and especially you, you seem to have a calm. Um, matter of fact, I don't know that your blood pressure ever goes up or down. It's just pretty steady. But you know, you're, you're such a, uh, a mainstay and I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I thank God for the ministry that you and Barbara have. Um, here, but um, you know, uh, Brad, those that know him know that he's the real deal, and um, he would much rather talk to God than to talk into a camera. Um, Brad, how have you seen God at work? What's God been saying to you? I think uh, the thing is that uh, God's uh, allowed us to see that we really are the church the church is not uh necessarily a building uh but uh that we are the body of christ and uh so he's allowed us to uh you know go through this storm he allowed it and uh we've not all been in the same boat we've all been in a different boat but uh we've been able to uh, see god at work and uh We've been able to uh, be in our homes and uh, watch uh, watch church on the internet, have church, uh, watch parties, and uh, the, the the cool thing is that the church began in homes, and uh, so I think where we went was from a come and see to the building to a go and tell, mm. and. Uh, but God means for good to come out of this situation and uh, God's drawing a lot of hearts and God's doing a lot of work. He's revealed that, that we really are the church and this thing is really about people. I know, uh, uh, you know, everybody's excited about coming back together and that's because they, they miss the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so people are important and that's, that's the business that we're in here and that's the people business. So I'm thankful for what God's doing and uh, uh, I think he's really stirred up a, a lot of good things through this and uh, drawn a lot of hearts to him. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking back, is either the, I think it's probably the second week that we're online that you and your wife and another couple were I'm not sure which home y'all were at that particular week, but y'all basically I didn't even know what you called it back then, but y'all were having a watch party, yeah. and y'all were texting uh, pictures to us, and it was it was really cool seeing community, and I think all of us now have been a part of a watch party. That's um, I mean it's though we're not here. I mean I've been here, but we've been able to connect in different ways. Um, whenever y'all been together, have you had breakfast? Uh, we have, <laughs> and uh, uh, but it was just great, just being able to. Uh, uh, we did distance ourselves a bit, uh, but but just being together and being able to worship together, uh, and uh, just uh, encouraging one another, and uh, mm -hmm. of course uh, just. Uh, just the fellowship, I think, is just special. That's I awesome. enjoyed it. You know, Brad said something that really struck a, a chord with me, where he said, 
we're not all in the same boat. Um, though we're all feeling the effects, we've all been involved in the same season. How you've been affected may be differently than how your neighbor's been affected. Um, matter of fact, I could look at Elmer and I didn't know whether he was working or not working. For Tom, I knew when I saw him uh, by his expression, they had not been working. So we're all affected differently. But I'll never forget the evangelist, the world famous Jesse Crooks, uh, an old time friend of ours. He said, God will either calm your storm or he will accompany you through the storm. And I think we're seeing that. That uh, again, I mean, I don't know what your story is, but for my family, man, we, we encountered loss uh, early on into this, this season. Not that my father passed because of the coronavirus, but we, we experienced having to wait, having to go through uh, a, a family-only service. So we've all been affected in, in different ways, but I think we're all wondering and kind of thinking about what's the future look like? We keep hearing uh, normal is going to be completely different. Um, do you believe, and anybody can answer it, do you believe that there really is a future for God's church? Well, you know, uh, just the internet itself and the, the ability to now go online and reach so many people, and again, that's what it's all about, is reaching people. And uh, 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 so we want to reach everybody on the earth, and then, of course, Christ will come back and pick us up. So that's the goal. Amen. Yeah, I think... Um, the Christian church has grown more in times of trouble than it ever has in times of peace. And while this isn't persecution per se, um, it's, a, it's a limiting and it's a trial. And so I think, the, I think the Christian church will grow more through it and because of it. And I just think that's what God does. If we were able to learn by just listening to it, we would never have a problem. But we got to go through storms. Isn't it interesting how just at the beginning of the year, the word that God gave us was awaken or awakening. And, you know, we, we can understand in part, but an awakening is not just a one-time event, but it is a continuation. And I think God's bringing an awakening. Um, you know, I think about just a little over a year ago as we all as elders sat um, really before God in an open Bible saying, God, show us the mission. What is it that we really value? Who are we to be as a church? And I think that that's so vital now because, you know, yes, 2020 was the year we were claiming. Man, we were so thankful to see 2019 gone. But um, I think as we're going to be talking here in a couple weeks, it's good to have that reset button. Um, you know, I believe that God knows the plans He has for us. They're plans for good and not evil. Plans to give us a hope in the future. So I want to give you briefly an idea of what the days to come look like. So for many of us, we've been asking the question, when... Are we going to be able to gather corporately again? Uh, just want to remind you that we have learned a lot over the last number of weeks that, um, as Brad said, we are the church is more than bricks and mortar. It's the people. And so the church has never closed, but the, the time to regather is very soon. And so I'm really excited that um, right now with uh, the orders from leadership in our country. Um, we feel at this point that we can regather beginning the first Sunday of June. Um, with that is going to come some things for us to consider ahead of time, uh, mainly us considering one another, loving our neighbor, how to really show respect. And so um, when we come back together, guys, what are some things that you envision that are going to be really important? Uh, not in just talking about Jesus, but 
how are we going to love God and love other people? Well, one way we can do it is if we're running a temperature or not feeling good, we don't come to church. We love each other enough not to get each other sick. Absolutely. Elmer, your wife has been a part of a sewing group that's been making masks. What, what have they been doing with those? Uh, she's part of a sewing group that uh, that has, like you said, been making masks. That they've been making most of them have been going to nursing homes and, and facilities like that that need them. They've been making two or three hundred masks a week and mm -hmm. sending them out to uh, to those. Uh, Facilities like it's just been by word of mouth. They, yeah. uh, different ones have heard that they were doing it and asked if they, if they could uh, make so many masks for this facility. And uh, different ones in the church have called and, and spread the news like that. So uh, she's been staying busy with that. So. That's awesome. So speaking of masks, um, when you come on our campus, some people's going to have masks, and there's going to be some people that don't. And, and just as we do during our seasons of fasting that we normally start our year out with, it's a very uh, loving and gracious environment. It's a no, no condemnation zone. So if you're one that wants to wear a mask, um, don't feel any certain way towards somebody that doesn't. And if you don't have one, um, just respect the one that does. Um, you know, Brad had asked in our meeting earlier about, you know, what are we going to do to be able to be prepared and to clean the place? Uh, do you think it's important that we are sanitary? Absolutely. And uh, I'm happy that we're going to take uh, every step and, uh, to, to do a good job of that and to uh, just to be careful and to uh, do our part. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that Brad had asked in, the, in our meeting is, you know, what are some things that we need to to really be con uh, conscious about, and, and such as, you know, are we going to give invitations for people to come down and pray for one another? Um, we really want to abide by all of the healthcare guidelines. And so, uh, from the time that you enter the parking lot, we're going to have greeters. And, and again, we ask if you've not been feeling well, stay home and, and, and watch online. Um, but uh, we're going to have um, a smaller seating capacity just so we can spread out. Um, we're going to be offering two services, one at 9 a.m., the second service at 11 a.m. Our doors will open, and we encourage you to come 15 minutes early. This is what's going to be um, a little different for us is we're a very relational uh, group of people, and I thank God for that. But... Um, we're going to be able to learn new ways to, to relate and show uh, that we're better together rather than hugging and shaking hands and, and so forth. So as we come together, we, we really want to come together to worship. Uh, so we're going to maintain our respect and social distance. Um, we'll set together, you know, if a family can set together, but the, everybody that's uh, in other units will be spread out to where we can, you know, have that space. We'll have an overflow room set up in our fellowship hall uh, to accommodate uh, additional people. Uh, there will be no life groups, no children's ministry meeting, no youth ministry meeting uh, for the time being. So right now in the present, we'll, we'll start the first Sunday of June and we will begin by a worship service. It'll be one hour long and we're believing that God's presence is going to be just as real or more than it has been over these last weeks as we've been gathering online. But um, in doing so, we want to, to provide as touch-free of an experience such as we'll have greeters that will hold the door open for you and uh, won't be passing an offering plate. We'll have a giving box. But we encourage you to continue to give online. Uh, if you've not done so, uh, we'll be more than happy to help get you set up to do that. But um, we just want to provide an opportunity for us just to love God, love each other, and to be able to see the world changed. And so we want to go ahead and, and encourage you. Be making plans. Uh, if you need a mask, we can get you one. Uh, bring a mask. Uh, but just bring your praise. Man, let's get prayed up and let's believe God. 
uh, to do an, an, a mighty, an amazing work. I, I want to close here by just giving you this challenge. You know, uh, it will be six months when we come back on campus that we've, we've been aware of an awakening. What if these upcoming days are going to be the greatest days that we've ever experienced? What if our neighbor um, in this community sees Jesus Christ in and through us? That's what our prayer is. And so uh, I just want to ask you just to pray for us, continue to pray for leadership. Uh, join us. If you'd like to join our greeter team, let us know. We'd love to have you a part of that. But uh, we want to wrap up today and just have a, a time of prayer with you. So, Tom, would you just have a word of prayer for everybody that's watching? Sure. Father, we just come before you tonight in the name of Jesus, God, and we just love you, we praise you, we lift you up, and we cannot wait to come together corporately. And, God, we're thankful that when we gather together in your name, your presence is going to be with us and is very, very strong. So, Lord, we just pray for the protection of our people as we come together again, Lord. Keep us safe. Uh, keep us well. Help everybody to respect each other and love each other enough to uh, distance themselves from everybody while getting closer to you. And, God, we just love you tonight. Pray for our pastor. Give him a great word this Sunday and next Sunday and every week. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be sure to join us this Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. And man, we're believing for God to do a fresh outpouring. God bless.